there comes a point in everyone's life when they realize that hey maybe money isn't everything i want happiness and shit and then they try to find things that will make them happy and some people do find their passions that also pay but after some time they realize that sadness is still follows they start realizing the reality of everything how us humans are so small and insignificant this is called nihilism of course but living like this sucks for some people so they think that hey if life is meaningless nothing really matters then maybe i'll create my own meaning to make life more bearable this is called absurdism meaning everything in life is kind of absurd but you know what's really absurd jojo's desire adventure so let's start from the starting skipping the sacrificial ceremony at the start of the manga that the anime also skipped the worst jojo of all time jojo star is helplessly dying since he fell down in shit until a gentleman saves him so george adopts the son of this gentleman when he dies except He was not a gentleman, obviously. But George is a stupid, brainless, mindless, unintelligent, dumbass motherfucker. So he does a lot of stupid shit, like taking this blonde guy in who will obviously try to do some Bruh. evil things in future. But anyways, the protagonist of this part is Jonathan, who is a very good dude and who will obviously try to do some good things in future, like subscribing to this channel and turning on the post notifications. No, what am I even talking about? Jonathan doesn't exist. He's a fictional character. Obviously, I said that so that I can get the people who aren't already sub to this channel to subscribe. And turn on the post. Dio starts fucking things up, like kissing Jonathan's girlfriend before Jonathan. Since you know this female won't be pure anymore. We get a time skip where some transformations happen. Look at that subtle off-white coloring. The tasteful thickness of it. Oh my god. It even has a watermark. Wrong. Anyways, Dio wants to kill George and inherit his property. Jonathan finds this out, but George won't believe him. Was stupid. So Jojo goes to his first adventure in order to find proof. Comes back with proof and an alliance with the Speed Wheel. Police also comes to arrest Dio, but he becomes a vampire and kills a bunch of dudes. Now Dio is slowly taking over the world, making mothers eat their children and shit. But since he's a vampire now and Jonathan doesn't have those vampire Vampire hunter weapons. He needs to learn magic. A teacher teaches him Hamon, and then they go to take down Dio. But Dio starts sending side villains. That's his thing. Teacher dies. Some other side characters come to help. They also die because. I'm I'm not explaining Hamon versus vampire science cuz let's be real Hamon's gonna be relevant soon. Jojo defeats Dio with a fire punch and lives happily ever after but does he? of course not Dio got laser eyes now using which he takes Jonathan's body away I think I may have emotions towards you and you don't have to have the same feelings I just You know, it was so dumb to even bring this up. New York black guy police badass introduction of Joseph Joestar the protagonist of this part and the grandson of Jonathan Mexico the speed bugon good nazis introduction of a bizarre villain Rome a ah. Joseph meets the protagonist of this part, Caesar, and they start training with this milf in order to defeat bizarre villains. First, they actually get their ass beat by these bizarre villains called Pillar Men, and then they start training, cause that's how life be. Also, there's this red stone which these Pillar Men need to become ultimate life forms, so they raid the heroes too. She's different when Dio's not the villain. The main gang locates the home sweet home of the Pillar guys, and the raid from the hero side begins. The dragoness oh, dies, and Joseph gets a new scarf. Now a bunch of battle happen, but let's talk about the battle with the main pillar guy, who turns out to be the kind of guy who doesn't give a shit about honor and uses his brain. Also, it's real that the milf, uh, my bad, the lady that trained Joseph is actually his mom. Nazis fail to defeat the main pillar guy, cause he gets the red stone and becomes overpowered as. F so Joseph defeats him, attends his own funeral, and racism is gone.
So let's go to part 3. Basically this part is kind of like a slice of life show. Episodic stuff happen which don't really matter when it comes to the plot. But you get to understand the main group of characters more deeply. You see them develop until a point comes when you realize that yeah. This is worth it. Main protagonist is Jojo Jojo. It is said that his edginess can actually break the unbreakable diamonds. He along with the other Joe Bros, Fire Guy of the relatable guy Kakyoin, actual protagonist Paul Naref and a, a strong old man go to an adventure to kill Dio cause Jotro's mom is dying cause women in Jojo are weak. She's dying cause of her stand. What are these things? Stand is the new power system which manifested cause a dumbass mother believed a sketchy guy more than the god. Joseph finds out Dio's location with his stand and the gang goes on an adventure. And you know Dio, our boy, he sends side villains throughout this adventure so that we can have battles that can rival Hunter x Hunter. Hunter Hunter, my bad. So the battles. Remember when I said that I'm not explaining Hamon versus Vampire Science cause Hamon is gonna be relevant soon and shit? Well that was a lie. I'm just Look, look, I'm covering 5 Jojo parts in one video, so cut me some slack. Also, I'm, I'm lazy. But that's how like this a new crewmate, a dog, who thankfully doesn't speak cause this is anime not Disney. This dog, Abdul and Kakyo die nice. and we get to the main event. Jojo wins and it's time to get flamboyant everyone. In this cruel and unjust world, that stranger you met who was nice for no reason and restored your faith in humanity, that's basically the personality of this part's protagonist and also is self aware of his protagonist here. The conflict in this part however is a stand arrow. If you get stabbed by the shit, you either get a superpower or you die. This stand arrow is making side villains left and right. Actually no, there are very few villains in this part. But anyways, Koichi, one of the greatest Joes to ever bros, gets stabbed by the arrow and gets a superpower. Meanwhile, Joe's care resolves the conflict and then they live happily ever after. Yandere is short the action, she becomes nice eventually cause Koichi is also nice and then they live happily ever after. Okay, let's talk about the main conflict. The guy that changed my life, the greatest villain in all of fiction. This guy has given the solution to Nahal and all that shit I was blabbering about in the intro. Like you just gotta find your fetish and uh that's I'll, I'll explain this in more detail in some future video. Let's let's skip. Hokeyasu, another Jobro, has a cool power. Self insert character for Araki has a cool power. And more relevance than any other character in the entire series, probably. But this is not really a gang. This part is built different. Josuke does his own thing. Koichi does his own. And it's a lot better than what I'm making this sound to be. Because. Lord Kira is the overarching villain. So about Kira, he suffers from anxiety but turns out some women get turned on by it. Good guys wanna stop illegal fetish but there's no Dio in this arc. So we are directly heading to the main fight. Parents love their children no matter what. Is there even a point talking about this? <laughs> Kira's stand is really cool, but Act 3 is cooler. No joke though, this ending was f***ing awesome. And that's on Josuke's mom. And I just remember talking about Josuke's mom. Joseph, very old Joseph is also in this part and he cheated in part 5. We finally get a Jojo who has a dream that fits the shonen magazine. Like this dude actually wants to achieve some crazy shit. Man I'm so excited to see how Jorno helps the people of it. Also Koichi comes to investigate Jorno cause yeah something important Jorno is Dio's son. Koichi finds out that Jorno is a good guy so he exits the story. Jorno joins the group of honestly best Jobros in my objective opinion. This group joins the criminal syndicate whose boss they eventually wanna take down doing stuff from within you know. Bunch of fights happen with other gangs which help us know how great these Jobros are and the gang takes the mission 
to deliver the boss's daughter to him. It turns out that the boss aka Diavolo doesn't like his daughter aka Trish and also his stand is overpowered as fuck. So Bujarati escapes with Trish. Bunch of fights happen with other gangs, Trish is also now and also we get to see stuff from the villain. Dual personality and shit, weird shit, bizarre shit. This dude got the greatest character design in Jojo's for no reason. Seven page Muda, Polnareff, Turtle, Polnareff, Tortoise, Polnareff. I still don't know the difference. Body switch, the Jorno Mista chef finally gets a completion. Power up, possibly a new magic system, using which one of the most brutal deaths in all of anime and manga is achieved, in all of fiction is achieved, and stones. Thank you.